Welcome everybody. I've been really excited about this day because I talked with uh, our friend in the corner about the homopathic uh, this friend. <laughs> yeah. Jan Scholten. Jan Scholten. Jan Scholten. How do you pronounce this? Scholten. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we had this talk about homopathic uh, medicine and this uh, more uh, holistic way of helping people. And I felt very attracted to it. I loved the way he explained it, the way he saw, saw it. And um, I wish and I hope that we could bring more focus on this way of helping people. Also, I know there is a lot of doctors who have read, a lot of read, 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 reading, read a lot of books, <laughs> and we learn uh, that what we read is true. And along the path, we forget to listen to our hearts. Along the path, we forget to listen to what might actually be a more open perspective and closer to nature. So I'm sure that you guys also have been along that journey. Um, a little bit before you came to where you are today. And maybe some of you guys still are wondering where your perspective is lying in this now. So, this is just my perspective. You guys, why are you here? Silence? Nobody knows? Yeah. Yes! Woo! Awesome! We got one! <laughs> 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 I'm here because a niece of mine uh, suddenly started chattering, chattering about half a year ago. <coughs> and she started channeling uh, an entity which told, told her to write a book about ADHD, ADD, PDD, yes. and Asperger. And she has to do something with it. She started uh, the, to write the book. Um, yeah, I think on a weekly basis she, she has a connection and then she starts to write. Um, but at a certain moment there was an entity who told her to connect me. And she, didn't, she actually didn't understand and neither do I. But we have to do something which is with each other to support us or, or something. And yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if you have a clue in this story. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted you to connect with her, or you to connect yeah, with her. Yeah, uh, she she got a message uh, to connect me, uh, so that I could help her. Oh, yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> we are these guys sent here, we call them life workers. We have this inner feeling, yeah. we just want to help people. We had struggles along our journey when we grow up, and the same was for you. For you it was also hard to be as sensitive, and well, you are very um, intelligent. <laughs> so that kind of worked both your... Um, it helped you, but it's also have been your struggle. That have this kind of sensitivity and this kind of brain level. So you move into the brain level and let that be your path. Now in order of bringing what you need to bring here, you need to reconnect with your emotional system and your sensitivity. In that form you can bring what you need to bring here and she helps you with that. So she, her existence helps you connect with your heart again. And from her she needs your connections and also your understanding of what is going on um, on a mind perspective in all of understanding what she has actually already done. When you read what she has been written, you will understand and see what you learned from a new perspective. And you will understand this perspective because it will resonate deep, deep inside of you. Mm -hmm. So it will help the people because you are to bring the message along, and it will help you because you will also understand yourself. Okay. <laughs> That's good. <Hey. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and great, really great. I'm happy to hear she's doing it. Good.
good she's embracing it. Okay. And good that she had me to help her because she needs some grounding. You yeah. know, so she doesn't lose herself in the process. It's a lot of hard work working with these identities sometimes. So she do need support. Good you there. And I was also interested because in her channeling, Einstein comes along. He's so well. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm, uh, I've been trying in the past to connect with Tesla. That's, that's my interest. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little less funny, he's more serious, but I love him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can easily connect with him. Actually, it's just you who are in the belief that you can't. You need to shift the way of perception. So don't um, don't judge the way that you talk with him. Mostly, it will be a feeling or a pop-up thought, yeah. and that is how he will communicate with you. When you let go of the mind perspective and just feel it, feel the flow. You will feel what he wants to show you. It's like looking at a paper and all of a sudden you understand what should be on this paper without really knowing why you know it, but you just all of a sudden know it. This would be how he wants to talk with you. <laughs> In job. He's a funny fellow. I'm not funny, but <laughs> I love him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> Anybody else know why they are here? No, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I came. That's to cool. be here, yeah. So. <laughs> it's just. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, okay, <laughs> I'm here. Awesome. And you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like really fine. Oh no, she's looking at me. She's oh. looking at me. I'm gonna pretend like everything is good. <laughs> oh, I uh, two hours, uh, hours ago I knew uh, that I <laughs> can't come here. <laughs> so, uh, but we had uh, a few days ago we talked about this. I, I have been. Uh, Written with you for yeah. and uh, you'll help me a great uh, deal. So okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> so wonderful. Uh, so uh, and everything you said it uh, came out. <laughs> so uh, uh, I have one question, and it's a, a, a very rare one. Uh, um, I don't think you. Uh, uh, I I'm gonna ask you anyway. Good. My granddaughter was uh, today with me, and she came with two shoes. Uh, suddenly she had one shoe, and we searched the whole room, and there was no shoe. She had one shoe. She uh, went uh, home with one shoe. And I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I think it's uh, not about the shoe. But I don't know what it tells me. I think when it, I know what it tells me, I find it soon. So, um, I'm going <coughs> to sit on my chair. You have to let go of control. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. <Missus>, got it. <laughs> okay. When I look into the higher perspective of what is going on, it is that you have this fear, and because of this fear, you need control, you need to control the situations, you want everything to be perfect, because if everything is perfect, then we're good. No, just be a mess and realize that everything is awesome anyway. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good, and you will find the shoe. Yeah. Maybe outside. Yeah, Maybe the other way. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and she brought you. Yes. Awesome. Tell me. Um. Yeah, tomorrow morning uh, I got your name and then I Google. Uh -oh. <laughs> I saw only uh, just of this evening and I know here and so I said, of, uh, yeah, I call you and said, well, hey, she's in Holland and shall we go? Uh, yeah, and so we are here. <laughs> 
because they are um, was then uh, Tesla and Einstein and from Tesla and the new uh, point uh, energy. Yes. Um, yeah, this, uh, I think that's the um, the way to uh, have energy here. And um, yeah, I yeah. Do you know how you create it yourself? Energy to create by yourself? Mm. No. <laughs> no. So um, everything we do, everything we say, everything there is is energy, right? Yeah. And I am really good at doing this every time I stand up. Sorry. <laughs> be connected with everything there is without any border is to realize that you're an energy and flow. You will always have enough because there always just is. The only thing is matter change. You are matter. So if you change matter into a, 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 a form that vibrates higher, then this vibration will keep circulating. Mm -hmm. So the matter that there is inside of your physical self has to have a vibration there, slow in order of having physical vehicle. Mm -hmm. The matter that your soul has is vibrating higher. So when you do things, have uh, suppressed feelings, have um, chemicals or stuff like that, it slow matters down inside of your system. It brings diseases or things like this. Yeah. If you set yourself free from these things that slows you down inside and reconnect with your higher self and understand that everything is energy, everything matters, so now you raise the frequencies, the frequency of love, da -da -da. <laughs> you set yourself free inside of your system, that means you change matter yeah. and that matter um, flowing uh, more in alignment with your true self. That's one of the things. And the other thing is when we open perceptions and open perspective to understand that everything is energy and that energy does need to come in the form of food or the form of water or things like this. You can reconnect to source energy and you can get your energy from there. This is why we have some people who only live off air or water. Mm -hmm. For in my case, I only eat fruit. I don't really look like this skinny person who only eats food, but I work out like eight hours every day. And I got loads of energy because I get it somewhere else. So how do we create energy? We are energy, we use energy, we transform energy, we understand that energetic flow is existence. So instead of holding on or claiming on to something, because then we block it, then it's not flowing. Matter change. Make sense? Mm -hmm. My friend is saying yes. <laughs> of course. Everything is a matter of perception. I always talk about feelings and emotions and follow your heart. When I listen to Tesla or Mr. Einstein, <laughs> They always try to make it more physical. They try to apply or <laughs> apply to you guys' in the brain perceptions of reality. So then we talk vibrations, we talk frequencies, we talk matters. And then it will make sense on a brain level. But it's all the same. It doesn't matter how we put it, it doesn't matter which words we choose. It's all about us. We are all better. We are all souls. We are all connected to everything we say, everything we think, everything we do. It's what we attract, it's what we send out. Everything inside of me are vibrating and it has matter. If you speak to her, it matters. You are a creation of many different matters. For me, I travel inside of myself and everybody else. <laughs> Sorry, sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, if you get matter a voice, then every particle inside of you have a voice. If your stomach hurts, you can go down and can ask your stomach, why do you hurt? And your stomach will be fine. Because it's like being 100 identities inside of one physical vehicle. You are many. You are many. You are vibrations. You are not one vibration. You have many different vibrations. And every single vibration inside of you has a matter. Every single vibration inside of you has a memory or has a purpose. If you haven't even this want to gain control over your body again, not control, illusion, not control, but you know what I mean, <laughs> you need to reconnect with the whole self. This is why grounded, grounding is so incredibly important. Boom, we are on earth, we are inside of this self. And when we fully are inside of ourself, we realize it's not about us, it's about us all. And from there we can connect with everything. Did it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I'm blah 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. You said it's like homeopathy, yeah, how it can play a role, and um, one more time, a homeopathy and how it can play a role to become more coherent or one? Definitely. So, as I was saying, everything is vibrations. Everything is alive. The plants are very much alive. They have very pure, five frequencies. If you take some of the frequencies within these plants, they are resonantly matched towards some of the cells inside of us. They can talk together and they can go to where it's needed in the body. That's one thing. So even that part of us are not believing, nah, it doesn't work. Like our brain is saying, huh, it's just one little sugar ball. How is that ever going to make me healthy? You know, I know these doctors, they gave me these big horse pills. That's the shit. <laughs> no. So this is your brain. But there is cells inside of your physical body, your parmels, your subconscious thingy, knows, um, that is a vibrational mess. So when you take this homopathic medicine, there's parts within a you who knows that they are vibrationally mess. So that means it even helps people who don't believe it. The thing is, our belief systems are incredibly strong. So if you do believe it, if you do believe that you can feel it, then you are helping yourself by guiding this medication inside of you. This is also why it's one of the reasons why it's extremely important that our homopaths uh, are aligned with what they do. Because the energy within you are reflecting in the medication that you pass on. If you believe that this is working, then this intention you're bringing within the medication, you bring on to your clients. If you don't really care, you just read the etiquette, you know, and then you pass it on, not emotional link to it, then it only vibrates with exactly it is inside of the bottom, and not with the intention of help or open heart. Plants are amazing. Trees. Trees are phenomenal. They have so much consciousness, they have so much wisdom, they have so much purity, and they have so much to share with us. So I would say don't don't eat the plants, you know, just <laughs> just talk with them, please. But, <laughs> but exactly these purities with inside of these plants are speaking to ourselves. It is so high vibrating and yet so sensitive that it goes exactly where we need it inside of our light system, inside our physical self. Many, 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 many years ago. Then we didn't have all this list of medication. You know, we only had plants, we only had nature. Do you think we have this kind of diseases back then? No, no. <laughs> Not at all. We were more aligned with ourselves, we were more aligned with nature, we were more aligned with each other. Yes, we were a little less intelligent in some points, and we did kill each other and stuff. We had to get used to this whole ego thing, you know. <laughs> But our physical health was quite amazing for a big stream of years. 
Then we started to be socialized. We started to create systems of being socialized uh, communities, you know, money and gas and ego and all these things, wars, wars with machines and other things that ruin the planet. We found different ways of controlling the species and that we used. We used it so well that they were not aware. They're still not aware. And they are so afraid of waking up that they keep looking and acting the same day, the same patterns, day in, day out. The funny part is we cannot control anybody who don't want to be controlled. So we are letting them control us. Who is them? Yeah, that's a good question. When you look from my perspective, anything is anything. So, okay, <laughs> I always love this. We got source energy, that is us. We all come from source, unconditionally love, unconditionally light. There's nothing else. In order of creating duality and in order of creating something that can make the universe expand, we needed to have difference in matters, different in frequencies. Therefore, we created five sources with different frequencies. Some of these sources emit some bad, some of them emit as good. But nothing is bad or good because everything is just created to expand. Yes? So we got the good side, we got the bad side. <laughs> the bad side is the controlling part. The bad side is not really bad, but it's, as I explained, part of duality. You know? When we came here many years ago, the Earth was created, that was created in human kinds. Um, first, there was created other species, and then human humanity was created. And then we had these aliens kind of guys coming here with different meta, with different roles. But with high, uh, high knowledge that there was not on planet Earth yet. And this was brought here. And it was used in different forms. So this is why we are saying nobody can control us unless we allow it. Everything is free will. Also for us. You know, even in the Bible they say, right? <laughs> It's your free will. So every day, no matter which voices you have in your head, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what your ego might be told, you are the one making the choice. Always. Isn't that just moving the, the question? Like, if you say that some knowledge was brought here by aliens that was not on Earth previously, then the question just shifts, where, where do the aliens come from? Where did they get the knowledge from? Right? The universe's creation started long before experiment Earth. At that point, we had access to all knowledge, all knowledge that ever existed, because at that point, there wasn't really much, you know. But there was no value in closing knowledge down. Then we created more galaxies, we created more star systems, and we learned a lot within these star systems. In this star system, we gained knowledge. Within this star system, we expanded the universe. We had a few, um, <laughs> a few projects which failed, and one of those who didn't fail was planet Earth. In order of creating a pure place, in order of letting these emotions spill out, and um, every feeling you have is energy, so then it is breathing, it's vibrating, that helps the universe expand. Mm -hmm. So by having this world, having this earth, where we cut off the knowing that we all are one, we cut off the knowing of the whole universe, we cut off um, the knowing of what happened after life, because we create time. We, we get birth, we get born, we live and we die. It has a value, it had a value. That means that everybody outside, everything outside of this experiment, has the knowledge. They keep the knowledge because that had value. But in order of expanding on Earth, in, all, in order of playing out these rules of, I love you, oh my God, you're dying, <laughs> you know? If she knew that she's just gonna be reborn in three days or not, she didn't care. It didn't matter if she knew that what she was going to go through in this life, everybody she would meet, she wouldn't live it. So then it wouldn't have mattered. So you say that there were previous experiments that failed? Yes. 
Um, so what constitutes success and failure? In, in That's an yeah. awesome question. So when I look into what fails mean, because nothing is a failure, you, think, you have matter, you shift matter into other matter. Nothing ever stops existing, it just shifts into something else. So when I experience fail, it is the intention of some creation building up. You know, like earth, it's vibrating, it's building, there's changing on it. Uh, the other experiments start vibrating, but somehow the vibration could not keep um, expanding. And then it changed back into another manner. Yes, but so they're still around, uh, yeah. just in a different form. A different form, like you and me. When our physical vehicle shifts, then our soul go, go backwards, you know? Then we shift into other matter. But, but then... What is the scale that measures that one form of transformation is a success and another transformation is a failure? It is only on Earth that we say it like that. Outside in the universe, where it comes from, there is no failure. There just is. And if there is something, and there isn't something else, it doesn't matter. You know? <coughs> but on Earth, in order of human understanding, in order of explaining, how it feels like when it vibrates and stop vibrating. I will use the concept of matters and concept of failure. Mm -hmm. But it sort of, to me, it sounds like there is a sort of predestined outcome that we're aiming for, and it's a success if we reach it, and if we miss it in one form or another, then that's what you call failure now. Yes, because on planet Earth, we are linked to our emotional system, we are linked to this wanting, like a subconscious wanting of expansion, subconscious wanting of um, having this beautiful earth, having this beautiful life, this inner feeling. So on earth it has matter. <coughs> on, earth, on earth we need to have something like a goal, you know, mm -hmm. in order of keep moving, in order of wanting to live. It's not only on earth we have this urge, it's in more star systems. But in, on Earth, it's very um, present. I think I understand that. Oh, but, great. It's, but it sounds like, <laughs> like also, you, because you said, like, have we created, you used the word, we, we created galaxies and the universe and we expanded it. I was just somebody else, don't worry. Okay. But, so, but it means there is an entity that did it. There was a, a vibration. Why? Okay, a vibration. But is there a reason behind it? Or is it just something that is? And if so, then what's the point of the experiment now? <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's, good. it's a great question. Um, so, when I tap into feeling, I feel the universe, right? What I feel matters is the expansion of the universe. And when you start expanding something, there is this urge in every cell who are created to keep expanding. That is the purest form of explaining why we exist. And is there a single origin of that process? What does that mean? Is there a single point of origin of that expansion? I don't know what origin mm. means. A, a star, a source. Oh yes, yeah. of course. Source energy is what we all are created from. Source energy is what is. Um, when I feel that, it's just like everything and nothing and point zero and that just is. But you can't create anything in that unless you turn something into some kind of matter. Because it just is like no duality, no friction, no nothing, it just is. So you needed to create matter, you needed to create vibrations, colors, so to speak, in order of creating matter and possible and different outcomes. How does that process of creation from the very beginning, how does that work? It is probably the same, possibly the same, which happens today, every moment, uh, I think. Eh? In, my, in my feeling, it started by something which we call God. Yes. And God uh, split itself. Yes. And how does that work? <laughs> it's, it's when, I, when I feel the feeling, it feels like openness like this. 
and then it just took like streams, just created these five streams down, some type, somehow pulled it out of itself, because as long as it is in the self, nothing can happen. Mm. So it needed to pull these five streams out of itself in order of them to start vibrating differently. I cannot give you a, a word to <laughs> what happened, I can only show you the feeling, because this is all I can yeah. Okay. In my feeling, that that what we call God yes. is actually nothing. Yes, and everything. Yeah. And everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't feel it. I, it's just. I, I know the stories about it. Yes. But I can't feel a lot of things. I can feel what is happening with it. But in this case, I can't feel it. No. Can then, you? Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, how would you feel something that doesn't exist? How would you feel something that has no matter? So the moment you start feeling something is the moment that it's created into matter. This is why you can't feel it. I can feel it because I know how it is to feel everything and nothing. I remember the feeling of source energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with feeling nothing. But if you feel nothing, you feel I can't feel it. Maybe you can. You're just not conscious of that. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> Experience. Go home and talk with your sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here. <laughs> It'll come. <laughs> We're in the process of writing a book. Uh, we think we are. Aren't we? we think we, we are. We think we are. One more time. Are you or are you not? Yeah, we think we are. No, 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 no. Yeah. Are we, we are. are. We are. Good. We are. Great. So we are. What I meant is that we actually haven't put words on paper. We did, but we're not sure if it's going to be in the book. And now, and it's all about what you're talking about, because we think, for me, it's that I would like more people to know about this, and especially in a way that it's simple, and it's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. and Let's make a children book. Yeah, we want it, uh, especially that it's suitable for everybody to read it. Maybe it's not going to be a picture book, but there's going to be pictures in it. We, we imagined that. But um, actually the question is, do you have any idea when it's going to finish? Or what do we have to do to... So the 99 on half past six, <laughs> you will put the last... No, seriously? Okay, yeah. so the thing is, you are way, 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 way overthinking. You're way, way, way over doubting. You need to just put your brain and say, Mwah, I love you, you helped me so much, but I'm just gonna leave you here for a while. And then let it flow. Put on children music, start dancing, feel joy, and then start writing. It will be finished when you're ready to finish it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just wonder when that is. It's when you are ready. Yeah. You are the one doubting yourself. You are the one thinking it's not good enough. You're the one rethinking over and over, putting the paper out and out. Oh, oh, I could also, you know. So, it is up to you. If you want it to be finished tomorrow, you can do it. Okay. Yes, I would the like day that. Tomorrow, then. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, good. And you have no reason to doubt yourself. Okay. Just let it go. It's just this when you are as sensitive as you have been mm -hmm. and are. <laughs> You meet a lot of resistance on your path. There's a lot within you that think it's not good enough. There's a lot within you that have not been acknowledged for what it truly is, for what you truly are. And this set sits deep within your system. So when you start doing something you heart truly want, you already hear inside of yourself failure. You already hear inside of yourself it's not good enough. You already hear all these voices telling you, 
lean back so you keep finding yourself. Mm -hmm. This is all patterns. This is what you met in life. It's not who you are. I know you can do this because your heart desire it because it's something deep inside of you and you are actually sent here to do it. So everything else is just frequency from the past vibrating and repeating itself in your system. It's not who you are. Yes, I know that. You know, and <laughs> you know, you, that's the difficulty. I think I know it, but I'm there. I know it. Yes, good. So then, say hi, voices. <laughs> nice, you can join me again. The funny part is, I ain't letting you control me anymore. And then do what that heart says. I had for a long, long time voices in my head. I still have it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are really primitive. They tell me like, really like, you're so fat that you shouldn't even look yourself in the mirror. Come on, girl, who do you think you are? If you go out of the door, people are gonna puke over you. Like it's that primitive, right? Yeah. So what I can do is I can laugh at it. It's like, yeah, you know, but I'm gonna run and I'm gonna do what I feel. So just keep blah, blah, blah in my head. It's okay, I know why you're there. I know where you come from. I know why, you know, just accept it. So when you don't have resistance on it, you don't hold on to it. Energy, matter, it can flow. When you allow it, then it's just a vibration going through and we don't link to it emotionally. It has no control over you. And then you learn to follow your heart more and more and more and more. That vibration inside of you will expand and that will be what will talk the loudest. But you need to practice it. It's like a muscle, like every other muscle. Yeah, you I need get to that. use it. And what do you suggest is the best practice? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so every time so you have every fear, yeah. go through it. Every okay. time you hear these voices, I'm not good enough, you just go straight in there. I'm standing here with all of you very, very smart and clever doctors who are, I don't even know how old you are, right? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> I'm this girl who didn't even walk to school, you know? And I'm even looking like a hippie. So if I should listen to my mind, I will never dare to step in, in this uh, room. But my, my mind has no control over me. I follow my heart and everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. That's the difference. You can do exactly the same. Hmm. I would really like that. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Tell me when the book is finished. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. What's this? <laughs> it's because it's low in battery. Ah. Then you have to push uh, like this button, and I think you're gonna have to stop the live streaming. <laughs> and, how, and how do I do that? Um. You say thank you, Helmut. Yep. Bye bye.